Hi, everyone, and welcome back. My name is Lexi. I studied abroad in fall of 2022 at Maynooth University in Maynooth, Ireland, and today I am here with Emma. So, Emma, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and talk to us about who you are and your program? Hi, everyone. I'm Emma Devlin. I go to Marywood University in Scranton, Pennsylvania, where I'm a communication sciences and disorders major, and I studied abroad in London, England with AIFS in the spring semester of 2024, so I just got back about two months ago. Awesome. Yes. So thinking about your program all the way back to before you went, was there kind of like a set moment where you decided that you were going abroad and you were like, this is what I'm going to do. I've decided this is what is going to happen. And what was that feeling kind of for you? So I had always enjoyed traveling since I was younger. So I always knew going to college, I wanted to do something of a program, whether it be like a study abroad or a Disney college program or something along those lines. Because when else would you have an opportunity to go somewhere for three to four months and do things you would never do when you're typically in college? So I'd always know I wanted to do that. And at school, I'm in a five-year program. So I had to kind of know my freshman year that I wanted to study abroad so I can talk to my advisors and plan it all out. So once I had my schedule plans out, I did so much research into all the different programs. Once I picked AIFS, the London-specific program, I did that the fall semester before I went. It was so exciting. Now that I knew where I was going, I could do all the research into London, into the area I was living in. Um, And I was relieved to know where I was going, but I was also really nervous because I was going by myself, no one else from my school was going to London, um, and I didn't know anyone else in the program. So I was not only nervous about going somewhere I'd never been before, but also not knowing anyone. But I was more so excited just to get there and to explore a new place so that trumped all of my other fears of being scared of going. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, when you kind of first like make the decision, it's a lot of different emotions and feelings because you're excited, but at the same time, you're like, oh, this is real now. It's not just like... <laughs> A dream that I've been having and then you have to like go through the whole process of everything and yeah it's a lot of emotions throughout the whole experience I feel. So now thinking ahead to when you were on your program uh, being in London was there any kind of like specific focus on like climate change or like kind of more like green initiatives in England? So London is very progressive and climate friendly so they have a lot of changes. I'm from New York City so it's very similar in the way where like we don't have any of the um, the plastic bags so in London they don't use plastic bags. If you do, you would have to buy them, but they offer a lot of the reusable bags. And they also don't have plastic straws or cups, so they have paper for all things like that, which took a little getting used to, but it all worked out. And they use the public transport. is It's a huge thing there, so the tube is incredible. A lot of Londoners use it. Um, many people there don't drive, so there's not as many cars on the road, and it helps with the lowering gas emissions, so it's really a win-win. Yeah, I know that uh, because I went to London for like a shorter trip with my school and we were able to take the tube and it's just it's very easy and efficient. And it's definitely very different from what I'm used to uh, where I'm from in America, where you have to kind of drive to get anywhere. There's not really public transportation allowed. So, yeah, it's a very big change. But I think that there should be more public transportation and have it be like easily accessible in the United States. Yeah, 100 percent. A lot of people when we like talk to some of the locals, They would say how like you take the tube everywhere and like a lot of the kids, you see kids when we went to class in the morning at nine o'clock, you would see kids going to school and going on class trips, Mm -hmm. um, all holding hands using the tube. So it was really great and it was easy to use. So yeah, that's the best part is how easy it is. Like it's just so simple and you just, it's so efficient and much better than driving everywhere, having to figure out how to drive, especially in England since it's on the opposite side of the road. So (laughs) that's definitely a benefit not having to deal with that. So how did you feel being in England um, as an American? How did you feel like about yourself, like in your identity? Uh, Did you kind of go through culture shock or was it kind of easier to switch over to the culture in London? Yeah, definitely at first I experienced some culture shock landing. I mean, the time difference alone, Mm -hmm. it took a little used to getting into that. Um, And like you said, driving on the other side of the road, little things like that. (laughs) In general, it was all fine. It's very similar. A lot of people I met were interested about the U.S. They find it fascinating. They wanted to hear about where me and my friends, each state that we were from, and they wanted to hear our opinion of the U.K. So yeah, they were really excited to hear about that almost as much as we were to hear about their 
That's something really great, I think, is um, just being able to kind of understand the similarities between like the two cultures um, and just kind of like have a mutual understanding and like appreciation. I think that's one of the best parts about studying abroad, I think, is just being able to kind of like immerse yourself in a different culture and history and just get to know the people and everything about the place you're living in, even though. Uh, England speaks English. <laughs> uh, did you kind of find that there was any language barriers in terms of like the accent or the slang that they use since it's different over here? And how did you kind of like adapt and learn uh, to the differences? Yeah, so the accent is a big part of England. Um, I find the accent so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes it took a little getting used to. I had one professor in AFS who was fully British, so it took a little bit of getting used to. I had to make sure I really listened. Yeah. Um, but once you got used to that, that was very easy. There's some words that they use differently, like elevator, they call lift. Yeah, yeah. Um, like boot for the trunk, little things like that, which sometimes I had to just like use context clues to figure out what they were talking about. But besides that, the language barrier was easy. Sometimes when I went on weekend trips with my friends to other countries, um, like I went to, to Italy, for example, I don't speak very much Italian. So that definitely took a little getting used to but a lot of the locals are very nice and willing to help especially in the touristy areas a lot of people do speak English and sometimes even the menus and signs are both in the native language and and English so that was really good and it's exciting to go like ask a local for help mm -hmm. and if they do speak English it's really yeah. a cool moment I uh, had a similar experience since I went to Ireland they like majority speak English there. But yeah, definitely the accents were fun. But I, I know that sometimes it was a little difficult to understand, especially the further west I got, like not near like the big cities. It's just a, a thicker accent, um, which <laughs> takes a little bit getting used to. But yeah, then traveling to the other countries definitely is kind of crazy when you see like the signs or read anything and it's not like English and you're like, oh, right, I don't know what that says. <laughs> but it's yeah. always nice to uh, be able to still speak with the locals if they do speak English to be able to have that kind of interaction is is really great, I think. Thinking back now before you went on your trip again, like right before you went when you were packing, how did you kind of prepare and pack for your trip? And was there anything that you wish you had brought that you hadn't and anything you did bring that you were like, why did I bring this? I didn't even need it. Yeah, so my program was for three months exactly to the date. So that's really hard to pack in. Yeah. I, I brought one lo one checked luggage and then one carry-on. So it was really hard, especially being a girl and wanting everything yeah. um, to dress for the occasions. So I spent a lot of time going through and seeing what I would wear every day, getting a lot of clothes that I can mix and match and layer, especially for England. It's really good to have lots of rain gear, obviously. Yeah. Um, so a durable umbrella, brought a rain jacket, different types of coats for the different weather. Um, some rain boots were good. But I also would say don't overpack. I tried to leave a little bit of room in my suitcase so that if I wanted to bring souvenirs home, and it's exciting to go shopping in the stores. I went to a mall, a UK mall one day, which I thought was super exciting. And it's hard to, to not want to buy things there. Yeah. So you could always buy whatever you're forgetting to bring. I brought one of those like cheap little uh, cameras, which I thought was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, Because it's super small and then you can bring it to the different countries. And then you have a million souvenirs and the pictures that you've taken. Yeah. So I really liked that. Yeah, no, that's a really good idea. I brought my Polaroid camera when I went abroad. So I have a bunch of Polaroid pictures. I had to be kind of like, like use it wisely because I only brought so much film and I couldn't really find many places. I found one place that had it, but like it was in a mall I only went to once. So I wasn't able to kind of race stock back up on my film. So I had to be kind of like know when to use it because <laughs> I only had to think like 20 but yeah I definitely agree bringing like a little like camera or something like that just like give a different way to document your moments uh other than just like your phone I think is really special what is a piece of advice you would give anybody traveling abroad or thinking about traveling abroad or just wanting to know more information about it say yes to everything every day is a new adventure you're never gonna know what the day may may bring so I would definitely say uh, to do everything. It's so exciting. Like you're never going to have another chance in your life where you totally submerge in the culture. Like it's different than a vacation. Even if you're there for two weeks, you're not really ever living in another country. Yeah. So this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I would say yes to everything. Travel as much, do as much. Um, especially when you're over there, it's a lot cheaper to- Oh yeah, yes. <laughs> places. So if you're on the edge, I would say- Go explore. There's no other time. You're this young. You can 
travel and do all of these things. So I definitely recommend to do that and to meet new people. Don't be afraid to talk to people. Um, even I recommend traveling in the country that you're staying in. I stayed in London, but um, I traveled to Manchester mm -hmm. one weekend, which was so exciting because it's so different than London, even though it's just a train right away. Like yeah. the culture is totally different. So I recommend don't let the fear stop you. Yeah. Uh, don't let fear ever hold you back because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It, it was my favorite experience I've had. Every day was so exciting and I loved it so much. So if I let fear, the insane fear of not knowing people and being somewhere uh -huh. else stop me, yeah, I wouldn't have had these great experiences. So yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Definitely just go for it because you'll never know what you'll get out of it. And when you're there, I totally agree with traveling both uh, outside of your country because it is very much cheaper, <laughs> like you said, and also traveling within your country, too, because you do have like your home city or town that you're in. But just exploring more of the country that you're living in, I think, is really, really important. And yeah, just getting out there and exploring and saying yes and Doing everything you possibly can to leave with no regrets, I think, is the best piece of advice you can give. Well, thank you so much, Emma, for all of your advice and amazing insight. And thank you so much, everybody watching and tuning in. And uh, stay tuned for another episode. Thank you.